Hello and welcome to the Psy Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. As always, I'm Corey and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jem and Luke Cup. Hello! Hi, howdy. This week we're talking about munching mammals and swallowing shrews. But first, we have a YouTube comment. Ooh. Ooh. Just one. This, yeah, just one. Uh, the only one we got <laughs> from the last still, week. We're waiting for more on the channel, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> so this one says, uh, you know what I want to see them do? I want them to take all of these sentience tests that they have, and I really want them to test robots with it. Without any of the bias of, it's a robot. Heck, they could even test Sims with it. This was on our Octopus Sentience episode. This person is clearly asking for them to take the sentience tests that they, they've used for octopuses and give them to sims oh and robots okay yeah yeah, yeah that's a good idea i think right the sims would fail they'll drown if you don't give them a ladder to get out of the pool yeah yeah they're not that's not very sentient no an octopus wouldn't do yeah. that would it you never no. seen an octopus drown have I've you i've never seen an octopus drown <laughs> first time for everything though isn't there we also have a question for everyone that is listening and watching head to the youtube comments and <laughs> give us some more please it, the question is are you vegan or vegetarian well we all are so that's Wow, we're, yeah. we're, what a weird subsection of the human species we are. So this episode is an odd one, and honestly, I wasn't quite sure how to approach it, because it is, it is very weird. So, from the intro, I'm sure you've got questions. Swallowing shrews, right? I didn't know whether... No questions. No questions. No. Whatsoever. Well, no. He, you swallow shrews all the time. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Morning routine. Vegan except for that. Yeah. <laughs> the health benefits of shrews are just outweighed by the. We all have a threshold. We all, please, we all please have name a line. The, name the health benefits of shrews. Um, Protein, surely. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't quite. That's not quite a health benefit. You could get it from plants. <laughs> Calories. It's a health benefit if you don't have any other sources of protein. Yeah. Do you have I, no other sources I'm of vegan, protein? Of course not. <laughs> Where do you so, think protein comes from? So you're from? eating, I mean, you need to have at least, what, about 50, a man of your size, about 50 grams of protein a day? Sure. How many shrews are you eating in the morning to get all that protein? Three. No. Whenever anybody <laughs> no. has that question no. that they always no. ask about vegans, where do you get your protein? I'm ready with an answer. Three shrews a day. Three say, shrews in the no, morning. No, that's not enough. That's definitely not enough shrews. That's not enough shrews. No way that's enough shrews. Three shrews. I don't think three shrews is enough protein for is. your I'm daily protein. Okay, think about how much chicken someone would eat for their daily protein. Yeah, but, I have no concept. Sure, but that's in the quantity of chicken. That's not whole chickens. Right, but... Yes, but a shrew is a very small, a very small animal. Okay, well, I'll eat more shrews then. Fine, God, <laughs> seven shrews. Get off my back! <laughs> Thought I was eating enough shrews. You have to up your shrew intake. As you probably are aware, someone swallowed a shrew. Not Luke. Someone else. It was an old lady. I heard who swallowed yeah. a shrew. You were not the first person to make that joke. Ah. Oh. It's in articles everywhere. So uh, this episode, we're going back to our roots and talking about scientists who swallowed something that they probably shouldn't have. <laughs> the like the guy science. who invented LSD, but with shrews. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, wow, we've done a lot of episodes about people swallowing stuff. I was thinking about the episode where a man gave himself stomach ulcers and then um, to yeah. prove that they were... Episode one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so is this... Okay, so is this... The Albert Hoffman thing where he accidentally ingested something, or is this he deliberately ingested something that he probably shouldn't have? Did he accidentally ingest the shrew, or what did he do it on purpose? I don't think one could accidentally ingest a shrew. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say that. I, I don't think someone could. He did it mm. fully on purpose. This is like a yellow fever situation. Remember the yellow fever episode mm. where the man swallowed vomit? Oh, uh, yeah, unfortunately I do remember that, yeah. There are a lot of scientists swallowing a lot of things. A vomit is worse than shrew. I'd say. Is it? Uh, Whole shrew? Did he did he swallow this shrew with the hair on? Well, you'll find out. Okay. Yeah, I mean... Oh, okay, maybe it's up for debate. No, I don't no, know. No, vomit's no, worse. No, vomit is... Well, it depends who's Vomit's vomit. quite bad, but... But he didn't... He didn't vomit whilst eating the vomit. Yeah, I don't know what state the shrew's in, though. I think vomit is literally the opposite of the thing that you'd want to swallow, because it is by... Like, it is specifically designed to come out. Yeah. Yeah, but I've swallowed my own vomit before. Not, Only once it, okay. not like after it's left your mouth and then you've got it in a cup and then you swallowed it. Just, you might have like just kept it down. In my mouth and then. Yeah, sure. You know. But getting a cup, consciously going into the decision of I'm going to swallow this vomit, pouring it onto your tongue. Sorry, this is really revolting. Um, <laughs> that I think is just the opposite of what your entire system is built to try and make uh, you do. Don't get me wrong. The shrew is absolutely the better choice here. I'm just trying to test my limits on this vomit thing, you know? But also, if you eat a per no, because you wouldn't eat the stomach contents. Never mind. Moving on. So my first question for you 
in this whole episode is why? Why did the scientist swallow a shrew? Protein. Because he swallowed a fly and he put the shrew in there to go and get the fly. <laughs> Hang on, the shrew was in the fly? No, no, the fly was in the scientist. Okay. And he was like, oh, this fly's not coming out. So oh, I, I need to go, I need to put something in there to go get the fly. So he swallowed the shrew. Naturally, he thought shrew, yeah. not the spider. No, no. Oh, a shrew makes more sense. Well, because then there'd be a spider because in you. So you'd have clearly to put the he'd, shrew been the spider. Yeah, <laughs> he'd, exactly. he'd been swallowing like 10 uh, spiders a night in his sleep, yeah. right? That did nothing uh, for that fly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, so uh, <laughs> seriously. Just a weekly shrew to get everything out. <laughs> what do you think the scientific merit of swallowing a shrew might be? I don't know. Is the shrew alive? God, no. Okay, so it's not like it's going to do something in there for you. <laughs> well, I don't know. Some organization. Maybe they're really <laughs> scratchy and you've got some stuff oh, on the yeah. inside of your stomach you'd that be you need putting to exactly you, If you want the scratcher, you'd be putting it in the other end, Luke. Really? Do you not know that people do that? What? People do what? People... I don't even I know about this. You know about this. <laughs> do I? You definitely know about this. Yeah, hold on. There's a thing uh, where... People put hamsters up their butts. Okay, no, so I'm, I'm looking here on Wikipedia. Best source. According to folklorist Jan Harald Brunvand, accounts of gerbling were first recorded in 1984 Gerbling. and initially were said to involve a mouse and an unidentified man. In subsequent versions of the story, the animal was a gerbil and the story applied to several male cele- celebrities. Could they identify the mouse? See, I don't... They only said un- unidentified man. But they didn't say an unidentified mouse. I feel like mice are generally generally go unidentified. <laughs> so I mean, you know. Wow. Uh, oh no, it's mouse. It's, not it's Mickey, whiskers. You know, oh, no. <laughs> mouse blindness. Oh. See, this is the thing. I don't know if people. Okay, I was gonna say I don't know if people actually do this dribbling thing, but someone has definitely done it. I know that for a fact because it's this. It's something that's gone around right on the internet. Mm. So someone will have tried it at some yeah, point. Yeah, someone will have tried it. Someone definitely will have tried it. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I just so, hope there's no community. You know what I mean? I ask again, seriously, why do you think someone might have swallowed <laughs> swallowed a shrew for science? Uh, Corey, you're going to have to tell us. We don't know. No, no, like, I, I <laughs> Was want, it a man I, dressed up as a shrew? No, I, want a seri- I, I genuinely want a serious guess. Like, try, and, try and think okay. about why someone might have swallowed a shrew. I, I don't know. I, I, I have no clue. Okay, come on. We can figure this out, Jeff. Can we ask you yes and no questions? Yeah, sure. Go for it. All right. Was it for any nutritional content? No, not not at all. Was the was the shrew whole? Mm, they chopped it into I think three different uh three different types of piece. Okay, but it oh. wasn't chewed. Does it have some kind of healing property? Is the theory there's a healing property? No, 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 no. Is it any kind of pseudoscience? No, no, no. no. This is this is uh it's archaeology. Oh, archaeology. Archaeology. So they found a, a dead body with a shrew in the stomach. <laughs> no. And they thought, well, no, well no, what no. happens? Why would you do that? <laughs> no, no, no. What? No, 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 no. Okay. I assume the man was alive. Oh, is it is it like, embalming? There's like an embalming thing and they put a shrew inside the body for like the journey through the afterlife in case you like need a shrew. You're No, no, no. You're going like pseudoscience. With, this is straight science and this is a really, <laughs> it's a very silly thing to do, but it's, it makes sense. So I will read to you. The introduction, no clue. the first paragraph of the paper. Even when the buried remains of small mammals are purposely recovered and analyzed, most archaeologists approach their interpretation with some trepidation. The significance of micromammalian bone assemblages for paleontological and human subsistence reconstructions is often obscured by factors stemming from the natural abundance, ubiquity, habitat, and diminutive, diminutive size. Diminutive sizes of the representative taxa. Small mammal skeletons may accumulate in buried sediments through varied mechanisms from accidental death to selective predation and deposition by a wide host of predators. Subsequently, their small and fragile remains are easily exposed to rapid and complete loss of spatial and structural integrity by a wide range of agents. So they were trying to figure out what the effects of stomach acid are on a shrew's body. Human st- stomach acid, yeah. 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 So. <laughs> I swear there's better ways to go about this. <laughs> Can you not just get some of your own stomach acid and put it in a cup? Yeah, could you not take the stomach acid not, out of no, the person? No, it's not the same. So, <laughs> Yeah, but okay. Okay, fine. It's not the same, granted. But maybe do that first. And then maybe see they if, did. Maybe did they... you discover enough that way and then, then eat the shrew. Did they try that first? <laughs> to my knowledge, no. So this is... um. Also, they chopped up the shrew, so that's not the same. So uh, well, mm, they, l- listen. So this is if the from... shrew came out whole after the stomach. Whoa. It definitely did not. It definitely... Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> they put it back together. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> so this is from a paper called "Human Digestive Effects on Micromammalian Skeleton." It's by a Peter W. Stahl and Brian D. Crandall from 1995. It won an Ig Nobel Prize in 2013. Of course, it did. 
I don't know why it won it in 2013. It was a good 18 years after it was published. Oh. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. And also, I found a, an article in The Guardian from one of the people that I think chooses the Ig Nobel Prizes in 2008 talking about this. So they oh. knew about it for a full five years before it won. I, I have no it idea. must have been a slow year. The there was a really long delay between it making them laugh and making them think. <laughs> <laughs> they were laughing at it for a good few years, and then they went, "Hang on!" Had to get over the disgust for a bit. They were like, oh. I would have thought, you know, it made them think. They were like, "Wow, this makes a lot of sense." And then enough time passed for them to be able to laugh at it. You know, but that's not yeah. the rule. Oh, laugh and then think. Yeah. He's laugh yeah. and then think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, tell us what the Ig Nobel Prize is for the people that don't know. Do you want to go for this, Jam? So it's like the Nobel prizes where you win awards for esteemed research or whatever but there's there's silly it's like it's actual research but it's like silly concepts that make you laugh first but they actually do make you think that's true yeah yeah something that is silly but yeah. actually has a purpose yeah and this does have a, a, a genuine serious purpose so brian crandall uh attended the ceremony uh the ig nobel ceremony which is very cool it wasn't a super popular thing to do but now it's it's become a more popular thing to do for scientists to go and get their Ig Nobel Prize in person. Uh, he was an undergraduate at the time of the study and now is a science educator. So I think this will become apparent when we're going through the study. I feel like this is this was born out of... <laughs> what if we did this? Like, what if we just... What if we swallowed yeah. a shirt and wrote it, wrote it as a paper? Because the entire, the entire thing feels like a uni student just doing something on a dare. And yeah. then writing a <laughs> very, very silly but serious paper about it but how old were these people were they uni students well he just said he I just said he was an undergraduate oh okay yep. right sorry not every word goes in okay you're too full of shrews so <laughs> <laughs> so I just had breakfast why they did it is uh, it, it's it's hard to prove that tiny mammal bones um found buried in the ground are there because humans purposely ate them and then deposited them there you know shitted them out that's that's what they're talking about when they talk mm. about depositions. Mm. Um, and it doesn't really sound like a problem, but archaeologists have different problems from most people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's another statement. Well, otherwise, they would be archaeologists, right? Uh, <laughs> so, so it's hard to accurately tell what the diet of our ancestors were, um, uh, it, uh, because we have to reject this majority of the small mammal bones that we find. Because, as I said, there's you know there's any reason they could be there like, there's tons of predators of shrews like, if you're a bigger think about it think about the number of different animals that would eat sort of a mouse or a rat mm. if you're bigger than a mouse or a rat and you eat animals you're probably going to eat mice or rats right that's that's probably what you're going to do mm. so larger mammals you've got birds of prey as well all of them are just taking these like little mammals eating them and then depositing them everywhere they're also they can also burrow they can just die all of these different things so many different reasons that you could find little animal bones somewhere and we we don't know if it's because people were eating them so studies have been done to find ways of determining sort of non-human accumulation and deposition eating and and the rest that's what that's what that means um and the idea was that finding multiple different lines of evidence would help in determining why the sort of mammal bones were there but the researchers pointed out that it wouldn't be particularly useful to it would it be it would be particularly useful to understand what small mammal bones look like when they have been eaten by a person because on one hand you can rule out that you can rule out that they sort of um you can rule out everything else be like oh well, it wasn't this it wasn't that it wasn't that but you're still not necessarily sure it was because a person ate it but if you know what it looks like when a person has eaten something, mm. then you could, you know, you, you're if you're an archaeologist and you're taking around and you know fossilized human feces, you can you can you can have a pretty good idea. So, um, hang, why else would there be bones in the human feces? Because because they could just like oh, they just happen to be in the same place. Same place, yeah. Wow. Imagine if there's two options there. Either something dies and then a human shits on the dead thing, <laughs> to, to or it, yeah. you die in some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Get stuck in it and you drown. It's dreadful. <laughs> it's probably not quite fossilized. Okay, I'll say it's probably it's not quite fossilized like fully stone. <laughs> what they're they're finding remnants of <laughs> <laughs> of where human feces would have been, and they find tiny broken animal bones. There's any reason that those that those shrews could have been there, oh, you know? No. Just imagining a shrew getting stuck in some shit and then just like slowly being like, right, that's me, I'm done. Oh, I'm dying. I've broken my bones in this shit. <laughs> yeah, no, maybe, maybe the little shrew's got a kink. You don't know. You don't know what his life is. I don't think shrews can have kinks. Hey. 
I'm going to go out on a limb and say right. I don't think shrews can no, have cake. I think they can. What we need to find is we need to find the people who want to shove gerbils up their ass and the shrews with a kink for being shoved up an ass. And then you've got a perfect marriage. So um, here's another quote from this study. It says, Our study involved the consumption of a skinned, eviscerated, and segmented insectivore by an adult human male, followed by the recovery and examination of related fecal contents. Now, what this is saying is we uh, gutted um, a shrew, we skinned it, um, and then uh, we ate it. And then we went through our feces and tried to find it again. <laughs> again, this really feels like like an undergrad had a bet. You yeah. know, like this this genuinely, in the way that it's written, right? Insectivore by an adult human male. Yeah. I know that's how scientific papers are written, but it's also the way that you would write it if you were absolutely trying to take the piss. <laughs> Out like, of interest, why... Uh, why do they seem to think that past humans will have skinned and gutted a shrew, but not taken the bones out? Oh, I think they just didn't want to eat the skin and yeah, guts. Yeah, but then, then the result they're getting is not particularly good, because the skin might change the way that the bones decompose. There's some skin on it. There, so there was some skin on the feet, um, oh, I think, still. What good news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They like feet, then. The top. <laughs> they ate a bit of foot skin. <laughs> but Yummy. Uh, <laughs> That's the best the bit. But also, skin. when you're looking at the remains, bones are going to last longer than the skin. And um, No, of course. Else. I just mean that the skin being on will change the way that the body um, digests the bones. True. So yeah, but also... That's what you're trying to get. There, yeah, we'll, we'll get to the problems with this in okay. a bit. Um, it's by no means perfect, but it is... I just mean, if you're going to eat a shrew, do it properly. <laughs> like... You're already over the you're already over the hump of eating a shrew. Just do it Just properly. Prepare right? it nicely. We get it. You eat you eat three shrews every day. You don't have to do I it. I eat them with a the skin on and the organs still in. <laughs> you have the exact energy of someone who eats a kiwi fruit with the entire skin. That's oh. exactly what you're doing. No. I did I did used to go to sushi restaurants and not know that you had to that you didn't eat the skin of the edamame. Jesus, you're a monster. I ate the I ate the whole bowl of edamame with all the skin, and I was like, "Why does anyone like this?" And then I found out that you're meant to <laughs> pop the little beans out. <laughs> Did you not see anyone else? Did no nope. one tell you? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I did this. For How like, long did it take you to figure that out? This long. <laughs> How long did it take you to figure it out? A few you? months, and oh, I lived no. down the road from a sushi restaurant. I went oh, quite a lot. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. And no one said anything. No. Not even the people working there. No. I reckon the people working people... there probably just thought, he must like it like that. Yeah. Did they ever start yeah. giving you uh, edamame on the house? Because I would. If I had a yeah. madman yeah. that came in More edamame. and ordered edamame. Yes, <laughs> and ordered it. Gentlemen. Because like, uh, you, you can't have looked like you were enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Why did you keep getting it? Because <laughs> yeah, right. I knew it was good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine someone eating a banana, peel it all every time and be like, oh god, this is horrible, but at least it's good. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, you know, you eat you eat like runner beans. You don't yeah. pop them open. Yeah, but you can chew those with, with like, you know, for less than ten minutes. Yeah. And, and and swallow them easily. So they caught some northern tailed uh, some northern short tailed shrews in Broome County in New York in the summer of 1991 long before any of us were born uh, they used snap traps and initially i was thinking oh wow that feels that feels really inhumane and then i realized that they literally ate the shrew so it doesn't really matter i suppose and also i guess that's better a better way to die for the shrew as well cuz usually they'll die from being eaten by something else but being caught in a snap trap and dying pretty quick that's that's better right not if they just die of old mm. age. And that actually brings me to the next thing. I wondered how many shrews died of old age. And I found a paper <laughs> that... <laughs> how old is old for a shrew? Uh, a couple years. Okay. Yeah, they're small. You know, this is a okay. long time for them. So I, I looked it up and there was a paper from, I think... I think this like the seventies or something. <laughs> there was, um, there was to, so there was this idea that male that uh, shrews generally sort of die of old age, sort of um, directly after uh, what's the word for when you make babies? Sex. Reproducing. Um, yeah, so they they go through a reproductive cycle. They reach sort of maturity. They they have sex and then they die. Right. That was oh. kind of a, a prevailing theory. That's uh, not dying of old age. Then it's dying of sex. Well, for them, it is dying of old age. It's efficient. Uh, okay, 
as long as they sex just before they are old. Well, <laughs> or are they, they rapidly they, degenerate they, after they, they've they, had they, sex? They, they, <laughs> they, reach the, they reach the age of they reach the age of having sex, yeah. of being able to have sex and yeah. you know produce offspring, yeah. and then they die shortly after. Right. But this paper was talking about how well that's not very. There's not good evidence for this and that, and I didn't look any farther into it because that's not at all what the episode is about. Okay. <laughs> I just thought you would enjoy that tangent that there is a paper about shrews and dying of old age. Not a large window of opportunity to get laid. <laughs> well, that's that's exactly my point. Is that either you you wait until you're about to die to yeah. have sex, and then you do actually die of old age, yeah. or your body once you've had sex just goes right. right okay, no need. Can for I this point anymore. out that this is not th- this isn't that's not what shrews do. They don't die after, just after they have sex. There, this paper was talking about how there are other factors at play that make it seem as though shrews yeah. die of old age. Okay, there okay. are animals that do put so much energy into having sex that they literally die yes um i can't remember what animal i think it's just some kind of small mammal probably a bunch of bugs too they die after having sex a lot mm. you know that's you know that's mm. what black widows do that's what yeah. um uh praying, praying mantises, mantises yeah. do yeah just be lucky you're not a bug yeah so back to the swallowing of the shrew i have another quote there are gonna be lots of quotes from this paper because oh, it's just thank god b brevicata that's the latin name for the shrew is a relatively large and robust member of its genus, with subspecific forms ranging throughout the north-central and northeastern United States and contiguous areas in Canada. This semi-fossorial mammal tends to reside in areas with herbaceous cover, frequenting runways in the upper soil horizons where it feeds on a highly Catholic diet of animal and plant materials. What's this a sun- highly Catholic, Catholic diet? Oh, like I a strict diet? No, exact opposite. Liberal, uh, taking not- everything. Oh. I- Apparently that's a that's a that's a way to use the word Catholic. Catholics just eat anything. Catholics eat anything. Apparently. I always okay. thought it was a religion, not a description of what you eat. <laughs> oh, is so it because some religions are restrictive on what you can eat, and Catholics don't? I don't. Have that. I have no mm. clue. I I did not bother to look into it. I I just found out that okay. Catholic a Catholic diet means varied. Happy to take anything. My wife grew okay. up Catholic, and she's the one who introduced me to eating shrews. So that all makes sense. <laughs> How many does she eat a day? Oh, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I have the leftovers, and that's it's the an unquenchable <laughs> hunger. <laughs> Once she's done, I get the scraps. Yeah. Where does she find those shrews? I don't know. She disappears in the night and comes back with a bag. <laughs> Look, are you confusing perhaps your wife for your cat? No, my cat doesn't go outside. She's scared. <laughs> of your wife? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks she might get mistaken for a shrew. <laughs> She's a rather small cat. <laughs> <laughs> no. What? Well, I'll, 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 I'll tell you uh, what they did. Uh, so this is this is the description of the sort of methodology from the paper itself. Standard zoological measurements were determined for an adult male specimen: head and body ninety millimeters, tail twenty four millimeters. Uh, they've got all the different lengths and weights. It's um uh, about I think. 6.2 6.02 grams for the gut and 2.85 grams for the skin by the way so they, these are tiny oh. yeah and uh the weight of the shrew was 18.92 grams so three <gasps> shrews really is not enough to get your daily protein intake i'll tell you yes, that unless they're entirely protein <laughs> yeah <laughs> those, shrews are, those shrews are jacked they yeah. are beefy That's i think they're barely about grams in total. Total. yeah <laughs> wow you're so right ain't it I need to get some of my yeah, wife's like shrews. No wonder you've shrews. been looking so sort of weak and stringy, yeah, you know? Yeah. I know. Twelve shrews. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that might reach it. Yeah. Twelve shrews yeah. a day. We'll, we'll figure out. Should do it, yeah. Okay, cool. We can write a paper. No. <laughs> I'll have to beg your wife for some more shrews out of the bag. <laughs> so the carcass was lightly boiled for approximately two minutes and swallowed without mastication in hind and forelimb, head and body, and tail portions. The rapid period of gentle boiling did not promote any further loss or dissociation of tissues. However, it should be cautioned that carcass segmentation may have led to increased exposure of certain bone surfaces, more likely to have been protected by soft tissue had the carcass been swallowed whole. Marker foods of corn and sesame seeds were ingested several hours before and after the experimental meal in an attempt to establish control parameters for fecal collection. Very good. So, to translate this into English, (laughs) essentially, they ate some corn and seeds. Waited a few hours, measured the shrew. It's nine centimeters long. Um, I think it's about 12, uh, 12.4 centimeters long, including the tail. Mm-hmm. They skinned and disemboweled it. They boiled it for two minutes. I assume to re- remove external bacteria. Um, yeah. 
or to make it slightly less disgusting, I genuinely have no... They do not... I don't think they say why. I don't know why they boiled the shrew for two minutes gently, but they did. Uh, they chopped it into separate bits, heads, uh, uh, head, head and body, legs and tail. Um, when they skinned it, they left some of the skin on the feet, I assume because it's hard to skin a shrew's foot. <laughs> Because it's so little. Yeah. Put all this effort in, you may as well. <laughs> so they all they then um they then um ate the shrew in those separate bits without chewing. So they just swallowed it whole. And then they waited a few hours and ate ate some more corn and seeds. And then they sifted through feces for three days. So the corn and seeds make sense though. Because, oh, you, because yeah. they just come out as corn and seeds, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't chew them, they'll just pass right through. So yeah. as soon as you you know you're checking their day, as soon as, as soon as you see corn, you're like, okay, there we go. Shrew's coming soon. Yeah. And then you start collecting that feces. And then it's end of shrew. <laughs> when the next load of corn and seeds come. No more shrew. <laughs> you don't want to be sifting through more feces than you have to, yeah, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> so they sifted through feces for three days. Um and in this part, they stirred the feces in warm water until it disintegrated, oh. and then they ran it through a quadruple layer of cheesecloth, and then, so cheesecloth is this oh, sort of very yeah. fine yeah. mesh. Then they cleaned the bits that were left over, and they used a hand lens. I think that's a magnifying glass. Sure. Okay. As, you, as you've probably noticed, the way that they're talking about things in this paper is overly, sort of overly flowery. You know, mm-hmm. very... Because it's a joke. It feels like it's a joke. Yeah. But it... It is, in some senses, serious. Like, it is decent enough science. But I don't understand the concept of making yourself eat a shrew for a joke. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, I, we're talking about it now, Corey, so it's it's worked. Yeah, but the joke is on you. You ate a shrew. No, I don't right? think so. I don't think so. <laughs> no, we have to sit here and talk you, about someone eating a shrew. Of course you would think that, Luke. Yeah. Oh, of course, yeah, sorry. <laughs> the joke can't possibly be on shrew eaters. <laughs> that's that include me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they cleaned the bits that were left over, used a magnifying glass or a hand lens to look for bones. Then they sterilized those bones by dunking them in alcohol and prepared them from a, uh, for electron microscopy, uh, which involves putting some sort of gold uh, plating on them, I believe, or uh, using some form of gold, which is almost frustrating that a man ate a shrew without chewing, then just defecated, sifted through that, and then put some gold on it, and you put like the the, the money that is going yeah. into. This. There are people who can't afford to eat. <laughs> and this guy is they should just try to the shrew, Luke. They should have just given them the shrew. Go out and hunt some shrews. That's not the point. They could give them the gold, maybe. <laughs> that would also. Be uh, you know what they say, Luke? You give a man a shrew, he eats for a day. You give him some gold, he, eats, he buys a shrew. He doesn't eat at all. <laughs> <laughs> goes to the shrew store <laughs> and buys many many shrews teach a man to shrew and he eats for a lifetime <laughs> I was tempted to make this a bonus episode over on our Patreon uh, it does have bonus episode energy it does, okay, yeah. Yeah. it does but I did not want to keep this from the world I wanted no. everyone to know that a man Maybe we should have kept it for a while. <laughs> no. <laughs> Public <not>? service <laughs> announcement. A man ate a shrew and then gold plated his own shit. All I'm saying is that if you want to go into science but you feel that it mm. can be too stuffy, it feels too it feels too serious. Yeah. Nah. No. Nah. Nah, you can eat a shrew and call that science. You can win yeah. an award for it. So Are we gonna get accused of encouraging people to eat shrews? I don't care. What uh, Who's going to be bad People at this? People are already eating lots of things. 150 billion yeah, animals a year. Yeah. I think a few shrews is fine. Also, I'm fairly sh- okay. sure shrews... They might eat less of the other animals in that case. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm fairly sure that shrews are one of the more po- uh, one of the most sort of popular animals in the UK. Mm. Let me just double yeah, check the pigeons that. of the shrew world. Yeah, so there are 40 yeah. million, uh, 41 million 700 thousand shrews um, in Britain. That's less than people. Mm-hmm. That's, n- that's less than one shrew per person. That's not very populous, actually. They're quite small. So you're taking a disproportionate amount of shrews from I'm sorry. the rest of us. It's, 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 They're it's going to go extinct if I yeah. not stop. <laughs> Once you up your dose to 12 a day. It's, it's the second most numerous British mammal. Mm. Right. Yeah, there are a lot of shrews. So we the, but we are the most numerous British mammal. I, I don't think humans are counted in that. What? But that's we are mammals. Stupid. What? Oh, I just typed in how many 
I just typed in how many humans in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> how many homo sapiens? <laughs> <laughs> how many? Uh, 67.1 million in the UK. Uh, 41.7 million. Yeah, so there's a few less shrews than there are people, but there's plenty of them. There's I'm going to go out on a limb and say I'm not going... To, the shrews will continue to repopulate in Britain because most people aren't eating shrews. That's true. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm having your shrew share but, and your shrew share. Yeah, but if we all ate shrews, it's unsustainable. Yes, I agree. Unless we start a shrew, a shrew farm. I feel like shrew farming mm. would be fairly easy, right? Yeah. Like you know, All you need to do is just hide them from the predators. Yeah. Which isn't too... I mean, everything is a, is well, a predator are, for are a shrew. Predators, but... Including us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently. Me and my yeah. wife. We're not hiding them very well. <laughs> 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 they're doing little shrew podcasts. They're talking about us. <laughs> Comparing this, doors. comparing this to last week's episode on dysphoria, this show can swing wildly between topics. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say, this is a lovely palate cleanser from last week. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. I'm glad we did this. <laughs> <laughs> Any gender can eat a shrew. <laughs> so back to eating shrews. Let's look at the results. Uh, another quote for you: <clears throat> The majority of recovered bone specimens appeared in the first fecal collection. Very little material, including a molar and one humerus, were present in the second collection. No bone specimens were recovered in feces from the third day when food remains from subsequent meals became obvious. And what I love about this is that that meant they had to sift through their own feces and find nothing. <laughs> yes! <laughs> the, the sheer disappointment of having to stir your feces in a in a in some warm water until oh, it disintegrates. Oh, no. Imagine actually having to do that. Straining it through cheesecloth. Yeah. Oh. It's not nice. I mean, it's lucky that it's your own, right? And by the way, it doesn't say who ate it in the paper. Oh. No. Well, yeah, was the person who ate it the same person who strained it? I mean, okay, put it this way. I assume that it was one of the two of them. I assume that it was one of the two people that wrote the paper. I assume that it was the undergraduate, because who else would eat a shrew? Yeah. yeah. It's definitely yeah. one of those things where, like, you want to move up through your industry. All right, I'll eat a shrew and sift through my own poo. I don't think that's sort of the pinnacle of archaeology. That's what you do to move through yeah. the field. I feel like... You get your name out there by being the guy who ate a shrew. <laughs> ding a ling ling it's the ad bell. What are we advertising today? We're advertising our spicy merch. Uh, I am wearing the tardigrade beanie that we're selling. Uh, it's a little little tardigrade boy, little water bear going, ooh. And if you like the tardigrade beanie, you could also get our matching tardigrade t-shirt with a little smiling tardigrade that isn't going ooh, but is going ee. ee. And if you like the tardigrade t-shirt, you might also like the Psy Guys little pin badges we've made. Wow. They don't match, but they do say Psy Guys, and you can show your love for Psy Guys in your pin badge collection, and they're very cute. Yeah, it's the actual logo. And there's still a chance to grab our Psy Guys calendar, which will give you a discount on the future calendar if you get it now. And an extra mm. episode of Psy Guys, all about calendars. Yeah. Oh, Wow, yeah, the, they will the get calendar that. episode, yeah. Well, that's the spawn from ourselves. Back to the episode. So have a look at this table here. This one is based on a table from another study. It was a study mm. on owls and other small um, mammal predators. That's animals that eat small mammals, not small mammals that eat other mammals. Although I suppose if you are a small mammal that eats other mammals, you would be a small mammal predator. It doesn't matter. Anyway, this... Is this is a this is a table of all of the bones that they recovered. Uh, so if you, if you see here, the number recovered and the number in the skeleton, there, there's two different columns for that, and then they've got the percentage abundance. So if the cranial fragment, they got one, uh, one sort of, they got one bit of the cranium. I mean, that um, looks like sorry in this table. Go for it. It looks like cranial fragment number recovered one number in skeleton zero where did what? the cranial fragment come from doesn't I apply know. because the cranial fragment is your skull and that thing was destroyed it was it suffered severe damage the the cranial the cranium there so the but sorry, why does it say that why does the nu why is, why is there, there not a number for number in skeleton because there's no cranial fragment in skeleton there's a, oh, there's a, a skull there's, oh, there's a there's a skull and they just re they got a piece they yeah, the, the, skull the skull was destroyed. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, but they got uh one of the one of the the mandibles, one of one part of the jawbone. Mm. Um, they got both of the ulnas. Uh, yes. you know, they got. If you look, if you look at this table, they got. Mm, they left quite a few molars in there. That that means that they. That, oh, they sorry, left in. That I means heard. that the molars were just disintegrated. Oh. So all the stuff that didn't come oh. out would have been digested, right? 
And so you could see there that they they had both of the human the, the both of the humorises the humori I suppose uh, both of the ulnas uh, one of the uh, tibio fibulas so sort of the the leg bones essentially here are survive fairly well the mm. molars surprisingly the teeth surprisingly didn't uh, survive all that well the skull was was a lost cause altogether yeah um and the i think the maxillae the, those are um parts of the parts of the jaw as well i think a different part of the jaw and that all survived as well um and it's actually really it's it's really weird it's, they, they did not expect that um the teeth would disappear because yeah. teeth are pretty tough, right? Yeah, they, yeah. they didn't expect for them to um, from them to completely go, but they did. So here's a quote: "Many went missing. One of the major jaw bones disappeared. So did four of the twelve molar teeth. Several of the major leg and foot bones, and nearly all of the toe bones, and all but one of the thirty-one vertebrae. And the skull, reputedly a very hard chunk of bone, emerged with what the report calls significant damage." Uh, this is from one of the people that choose the Ig Nobel Prize. This was in that Guardian article that I mentioned from two thousand eight. Uh, so yeah, like it was. It was carnage. They did. They, they recovered. I think about twenty percent of uh, <laughs> about twenty percent of the animal. Um, well, well, I think maybe of the skeleton when they uh when when it came out. Um, and I've got another banger of a sentence here. Due to the controlled nature of this study, we have exact information on both the predatory consumer and the prey species consumed, the number and nature of skeletal elements involved in consumption, and the manner in which they were introduced in the consumer. <laughs> 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 what it's saying there is that when we usually study this, we don't know what an owl has eaten. We don't know if it, if the if the the shrew that the owl ate had all of its bones. But in this case, we do know because I was the consumer. <laughs> And I am a person, I and I wrote all it. Of them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which, like, this is again so much. So much of this just feels like a joke because he's just saying, "Well, in this case, we we know who the consumer was. It was me." <laughs> <laughs> but he's also just writing in the way that you're talking. Like, we we put things in Latin in everything. Mm. Like, we we do sort of obfuscate a lot of science. Anyway, that is pretty standard in science. Not to this, like, to a joke level, but, like... Yeah, I mean, is, I, yeah. I don't think... I think the, the point of science, the point of scientific papers, the reason that we use Latin, the reason we sort of obfuscate a lot of stuff is almost counterintuitively to be incredibly clear about what we're talking about. Because colloquially, when we talk, we mm. we lose a lot of information, right? We're, we're not precise in our language. And the whole point of scientific papers is to be incredibly precise with one's language. Mm -hmm. Although, of course, you get to the point of this, of saying, you know... Um, we have exact information on both the predatory consumer and the prey species consumed. That is incredibly precise to the point of being almost difficult to parse through mm. for the for the sort of layperson. When really what this person is saying is, I ate the shrew, and so I I know I know what I ate. That's yeah. I, we usually don't know what they ate because you can't ask an owl, but you can ask me, and I'm telling you, I ate an entire shrew. Jesus. So I wonder if you could get like train an AI to take scientific papers and put them into um, like layperson speak. I don't think you could. I, I, I do not think you could. I just, it's it could, because it, when you do that, you then have to, it, what you're essentially doing is saying, what, what you're essentially asking is, can we make an AI do science communication? And people can be terrible at science communication. You know, I've met um, influencers and creators and I'm not going to badmouth anyone, you know, in, in particular, but I've met creators and I know creators um, on, you know, platforms like TikTok and whatnot who do a really, really poor job of science communication because they'll oversimplify to the point of basically lying to their audience or mm. they will get something wrong and refuse to um, refuse to concede it, you know, and sort of this translating the, the difficult science stuff to a thing that that anyone can understand. It's really, really difficult. And I think beyond what an AI could do. All right. You got a job for now. Yeah. <laughs> Take back in a few years. <laughs> a few years from now, I'm going to start training. Although, <laughs> perhaps you could train an AI to interject in conversation and ask silly questions and then not listen to the no, answers. No, I actually you think could that's that. a lot harder than people think, Corey. <laughs> um, <laughs> way beyond the capability yeah. of an AI. Yeah. <laughs> so moving on. As I've said, what he, what he essentially said is that we know everything about this because it's a controlled study, because I'm the person that ate it, in all of these other cases, we can't really do controlled studies because 
we're not you know we're not able to control for wild animals eating what wild animals eat mm. um and it seems like only about 28 bones or fragments of bones were found which is um pretty low when compared to all of the bones in a shrew no i do not know how many bones are in a shrew. i knew you were going to ask that and so i preemptively decided to say i i did not bother to look it up i don't know it's unimportant <laughs> probably a similar number of bones that a human has because that's how evolution works cool <laughs> is that okay luke i actually wasn't going to ask were you really not no. <laughs> <laughs> so um as i said there was about 20 percent uh of i think the bones that were left over it's 20.6 percent that's an excluding the cranial fragment because i think that the skull was just too messed up uh, they just removed this the whole sort of cranium from the equation and they compared it to another study one that wasn't done on humans obviously uh one that looked at different um predators of small mammals and um to sort of compare to see how how much of the shrew passed through the human in comparison to those animals um and bear in mind that the other study used estimations on the low end because they didn't specifically know what state the carcass was in when the animal got to it but the 20 percent number is lower than all of the all of the other predators surveyed in that other study except for a kestrel and the quote here says as expected the relative abundance of individual prey skeletal elements is most similar to surveyed mammalian predators including white-tailed mongoose small spotted gannet bat-eared red and arctic foxes coyote and pine marten what they're saying there is compared to other mammals we're pretty similar all of these this is such a stupid i want everyone that's listening to this to read this paper it is like six pages long if that and it is fantastic it is full of just gems so they hypothesize that the four limbs survived fairly well because this this species of shrew that they were eating um or the species of shrew that they ate rather was particularly adept at climbing and burrowing which would require relatively strong four limbs and so proportionally thicker bones Right, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were also on uh, the low end for um, mammals um, in terms of the, the bones that came through and more similar to birds uh, and more similar to birds um, in terms of the bones recovered, obviously, which suggests that chewing aids in destroying non-cranial bones when combined with the stomach acid because they didn't chew. Right. And birds, as we know, right. don't chew yeah. because birds don't have teeth. 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 They continue to talk about the teeth, um, which were mostly intact, but cracked. Um, and they said it could be down the lines of weakness that were already there and that was just exacerbate, exacerbated by the stomach acid. Um, and also the teeth weren't necessarily in the jawbone. In fact, I think most of them weren't in the jawbone. So they came loose from the jawbone and just, you know, um, were floating about in the stomach. But again, I mean, I know that a, a shrew molar is going to be tiny, right? Remember, think about the shrew that oh. is, um, gosh, it was maybe 10 centimeters long. Think about how small its teeth are going to be. Oh, no. That's just round and round. That doesn't, that, that doesn't sit right teeth. with me. I mean, even, like, I feel like smaller than your fingernail. Like, way smaller than your fingernail, obviously. But, like, would. What, like, the tooth? Yeah. Oh, way smaller than your fingernail. No, I'm saying yeah. you could fit a bunch yeah. of them on your fingernail. Oh. Be so cute. As you can see in these images here, these, these are uh, what they got from the uh, electron microscope. So you could see a sort of the. Um, uh, one of the sort of, I think it's a jawbone there. Um, and then another close up view of the jawbone with the, with the teeth in there. That first picture looks Ew. like a bunch of trapped dog souls. I'm sorry. Looks oh, like, like, like little souls. Oh, I dogs hate that. Trapped. I see it. It does, doesn't it? it yeah. Does. yeah. Luckily, it's just a dead shrew. So, <laughs> luckily. <laughs> so we've got to the conclusion now. This is the first paragraph of the conclusion. It's also incredible. This study was undertaken as a contribution towards unraveling the many ambiguities that can surround the interpretation of microvertebrate accumulations in archaeology. Small animals are perfectly adequate human dietary inclusions. Often, their role in paleoecological analysis, paleo, paleo, paleoecological analysis, this is tough, there are big <laughs> words here, uh, <laughs> often their role in paleoecological analysis, I'll do, uh, is crucial. Nonetheless, the profuse ways in which the remains can be introduced and subsequently altered in buried contexts often produce significant interpretive ambivalence. In the absence of relatively unique corporatic evidence, the identification of microvertebrate assemblages, which had been purposely accumulated by humans, is obscure at best. This paper offers a pre preliminary assessment of human signatures on microvertebrate remains resulting from the controlled digestion of a small insectivore. What all of that means is it's very it's very useful um, to to know when a human is eating a small animal, mm. and a small animal is is good for people to eat. It's it's a good it's good for your diet. Was there any mention of so obviously they've said eighty percent of the bones vanished, but the twenty percent that are left because the point was to find out what the stomach acid and the digestive system mm. does to the leftover bones, so you can see oh these bones were eaten by a person maybe. Not just that, 
But, oh, really? Okay. Well, okay, think about it. If you are taking it from a whole shrew, right, mm -hmm. and you know what bones are left over, if you can see the bones that are left over, um, and only those bones, yeah, then you know, oh, a human probably ate that, right? Okay. Because yeah. you know what can survive, what, what shrew bones can survive in, a, in the human digestive system. Right. Uh, so it wasn't so much about like seeing like the texture of the bone once it's come out. It's it's the whole thing, really. Okay. It's seeing it's seeing what it, so it, it it is both seeing what is left and what 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 is left looks like. Assuming the human in the past didn't chew at all. Yeah, they skinned <laughs> they skinned split up the shrew into different bits, boiled it, uh, sorry, parboiled it, and then ate it without swallowing. So in fact, cut it into three pieces. They've found out. Um, they've they've got evidence of things that it looks like when a bird has eaten something, as you said, um, because the bird doesn't have teeth, so it doesn't chew. So a bird with a human digestion. So if they find, yeah, so, so if they find something, and they're like, oh, this looks just like the time we did this, then it was probably a bird. It probably was digestive tract with yeah. a human digestive tract. <laughs> a harpy, perhaps, you know. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Did they get anything useful out of this? Yeah, may well, <laughs> they won an Ig Nobel. Okay, that's more or less um, the sort of study. Um, wh what they've said also is that it's not clear as to whether um, the sort of digestion that happened in in this experiment was typical of humans, um, and the sort of two days of the maximum transit. Um, was also representative of the human population. But they also say, nevertheless, the results of our small preliminary studies certainly tend to support um, a specific paper over another paper. Um, which, uh, look, honestly, I just... It feels, as we get towards the end of this, that someone tried really, really, really hard to make it scientifically viable to mm. eat a shrew, and they did it. Well done to them. Um, so we've got the acknowledgements now. Which I will read again verbatim. The shrew. The shrew. <laughs> Just the one shrew. We give belated thanks to an anonymous Blarina Brevicoda whose ultimate sacrifice in the name of science is appreciated. Oh. Is that the shrew? Oh, that's, that's the, the shrew. shrew. Oh. <laughs> Why did they name it? <laughs> that's the that's the Latin name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's anonymous. Oh, okay. It's an anonymous well, I shrew. That was just her name. So they didn't identify <laughs> the shrew. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, so that's a uh, <laughs> that's is that the only acknowledgement? No, there are other acknowledgements, okay. but right. the shrew comes before the guy who ate the shrew. Everyone else. Yeah. Great. Oh, as it should. Yeah. Yes. Don't the shrew gave gave the most. Yeah. To, to the experiment, really. I mean, yes. I don't know. Do not shrew argue this. Don't argue this. What? This, I I'm just saying the shrew was going to be eaten by something any anyway. Probably no. Might have had sex and died <laughs> of old age. That's true. That's a better way to go than big boiled and chopped into three pieces and eaten. It's not like you were. It was boiled. It was dead when it was boiled. <laughs> Uh, Corey, we're all going to die of something. It doesn't mean it's not sad if we get killed and boiled. <laughs> I'm going to say I do not care if if once I'm dead, I'm boiled. Yeah, but you'd care if I killed you now and then boiled you. I don't think you could kill me, Luke. <laughs> I could sneak up on you. If you were a shrew. No. <laughs> I could sneak up on you at some point. Sorry, Corey, it's for science. I'm an archaeologist now. I hate to find out what it's like I'm if I eat, eat you without chewing. <laughs> How, oh my god, eating Cory without chewing. Well, there's lots of little pieces. There's a lot, there's a lot not to does, chew. That defeats the purpose. It's quite a bit bigger than a shrew. Thank you! Oh. That does defeat the purpose, yes. <laughs> of not chewing. Yeah. Of what does? Chopping up into little pieces? Yeah. Yes, but they did this in this paper too. Yeah, but they didn't. They only chopped it up into... They, they, they chopped it up into fairly large pieces. You know, right. Okay. Relative to Compared to the size of the shrew. Yeah, though. they only chopped it up into four different pieces. Yeah, sure. You know. Okay. <laughs> like, it's not like... Well... Chopping me up okay, into well, my I'll size chop pieces. you up into four pieces and I will chew because I think eating people you probably do chew. I I'll tell you this, Luke, you definitely gotta chew. Yeah. 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 It's, it's tough that meat. Unless you that cook challenge. it for a long, long time. Mm. Yeah. Well you so, are boiling, so it's boil for a bit. For two longer. minutes. Yeah. For two minutes though, Jen. No, it's just no, take just off boil the a bit longer. Bacteria. No, yeah. no, no, because then that's cheating. Mm. It's not quite the same. You gotta you gotta eat an undercooked Cory. Are, <laughs> are you happy with that? Are you happy with the decision that you've made? No. It's for science. No, I'll, I'll stick to a shrew. It's all right, I'll do it. You can just get him. I'll, I'll tell you one thing that is for science. It's the quickfire quiz. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. Shrew edition. Yeah, it's not going to be another one of those. <laughs> I just saluted the shrew. So the rules are the same as always. I'll ask one question, one question between the two of you. The first person to buzz in with the correct answer after I finished asking the question wins. What do they win, Jamp? A lovely, delicious shrew. I, I cannot promise that. Uh, the opportunity to eat Cory. 
No. Oh. You can, how about this? I will allow you to find, kill, parboil, and eat a shrew. I don't want to eat a shrew. I want no, to... I'll allow you. You don't have to do it. I'm just giving you. you permission. He's not going to dob us in. I won't stop you from it. Okay, okay. I'm offering up the uh, the permission to eat curry. No. Um, how kind of you. Yeah. No. Uh, as, <laughs> as my... What would you like to offer as a prize, champ? Um, nothing. Okay. <laughs> as always. What is your buzzer, Luke? Oh. I'm just like a shrew. A little shrew noise. Oh, Jam, okay. what is your buzzer? Oh, God. So a very large It's shrew. a very masculine shrew. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, what animal did they eat? Oh, Look, you got, you got first. Oh, okay. A shrew? Oh, I need to be more specific. Than oh, that. not I the don't... Latin yeah, name. No, the not the Latin. Latin name. Just the full English oh. name. For the type of shrew that they ate. Oh, I don't know. I don't Which know I before. said. I, I know, you said it like a minute ago and I've already forgotten it. A feature of his body. Tailed shrew. Yeah. Jump. A big tailed shrew. Long tailed shrew. <laughs> short tailed <laughs> shrew. There you go. Hell yeah! <laughs> I get to eat curry! A northern short tailed uh. shrew. So before we go, we would like to thank all of our patrons with a very special thank you to executive producers Rosa Rodriguez and Donito. And also, thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday and why not leave us a nice wee comment? Support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys or you can find and contact us at SciGuys Forward on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, here on YouTube, and at SciGuys on TikTok too. Or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. That's SciGuysPod at gmail.com. SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCory everywhere. You can follow me at Jampkin. I was going to say not Jampkin. At Jampkin everywhere. <laughs> you can follow me at Luke Cup Fourth Not Everywhere. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.